Hello guys, this is Benny from Kamui Cosplay and welcome to one of those videos where I'm the one stealing the spotlight. Many of you told me that you wanted me to make a video of how I 3D model and print Svetlana's costume pieces with Blender. And here I am, like any good parent, showing you that you just need to cry long enough to finally get what you want. All joking aside, when I started with Blender I was actually really annoyed that there were not really any tutorials that showed you how to make a complete costume piece from the very beginning to the finished print. So hopefully I'm about to change that today, because I'm going to show you how I made this alloy headpiece from Horizon Zero Dawn all the way from reference image to what you see here. Now if Svetlana was here, she would probably use this moment to tell you to buy her amazing costume books if you want to make costumes too, but lucky for you, it's just me today. And I'm not gonna remind you of that. <laughs> but now let's dive into Blender. Okay now, I switched cameras so you can actually see what I'm doing on my screen. And rule number one of 3D modeling is get good reference images from as many sides and views as possible. Horizon luckily has a pretty good photo mode. So I could take a lot of screenshots from all views and angles. And for 3D modeling, I usually suggest getting at least a view from the side and one from the front. That should be enough. Then next, I went into Photoshop and put all those views into one image. And then I used the guides, which you can find under view and show and guides, or just drag them down from the rulers. Um, just to make sure they all have the same size and proportions. So when I import them into Blender, it's one image uh, with all the views on it I can work with. Okay, next let's open Blender. I'm actually using Blender 2.8, which is still in beta, but if you go to the website, you can see, uh, you can download it right here. Uh, the, the official build is still 2.79, but I find 2.8 is a lot more easy to work with. So I really suggest using this or at least getting used to it uh, from the very get-go. It sometimes crashes, but just save often and I never really had problems with it. So go with 2.8 is my suggestion. Then when you open the program, this is what it looks like. Right, looks complicated, lots of buttons and interface stuff, but rest assured there's maybe 10% of all of that that you're gonna use to make like a headpiece like that. First, let's talk about how you navigate through the 3D space. And you do that mostly by using your middle mouse button. You click it, drag it and rotate the camera. Pretty easy. Now, if you hold down shift at the same time, shift and middle mouse button, you can pan the camera. Look around like that. And if you scroll with the middle mouse button, you can zoom in and out. You can do all the same by using these buttons to the right too. You zoom or pan or uh, rotate the camera. Oops, sorry. Or using these here. You can also click the little buttons to go to the views. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Middle mouse button all the way. Now, uh, for modeling, you also want to go to the top, front, and side views a lot. You do that either by going to view, viewpoint, uh, front, back, right, left, top. You can use those. If you have a number pad on your keyboard, you can press 1 for the top view, 3 for the right view. You can see it here as well. Front view, right view, and 7 for the top view. So 1, 3, and 7. If you're on a laptop like me and don't have a number pad, go to Preferences, Input and say Emulate Number. Then you can just use the numbers on your keyboard. Okay, what else do we need for navigation? We don't need the timeline, so you can just drag this one down. There is another menu to the right where you see this little arrow. You can either push it, which brings up like stuff like uh, the dimensions for this cube or the location, or you can press the N key. Let me just quickly turn on my screen keys so you see what I'm pressing. Awesome. You can press M to bring up this menu as well. And one more thing, you can go to the edges of your view, like the top or the right, and press the rest, the right mouse button, which brings up this menu here that says area option, split or join area. Split basically means you can split it. Put your top view, for example, to the top, and put the bottom view to the front. And then when you edit something, it shows you immediately what this does from every angle. Useful, right? I never use it at all. I only work with one view. So I just go back to join. Let's only use this one. 
and then I much rather just flip through the views by pressing the buttons. But it's entirely up to you. You can, uh, if you have a big screen, you can make as many views as you want. Like split it once, split it twice, and split it even more times. Yay! But you don't really need it, like I said. Okay, next, which one of those buttons and uh, funny uh, icons will we use? The answer is not that many. Luckily, because you can see here in the top there is layout, modeling, sculpting, UV editing, texture, paint, shading, animation, rendering, composing, sculpting. We don't need any of those. I'm just gonna stay in the layout for this entire process. So, uh, yeah, consider yourself lucky <laughs> because Blender has a lot of options. Then to the right you have your options of the viewport. You can turn off this weird 3D cursor they have. You can turn up the, the yellow point here, it's the origins. You can basically get rid of everything. You can put all the extras away. You can disable the grid or the axes. Um, but I usually leave this on. I only disable the 3D cursor and the origins because they get in my way all the time. Then to the right of this we can make everything transparent, which is very useful for modeling. Because if you wanna like get the the point that's behind here, you can just press transparent and select it. Awesome. And then to the right here, you can choose between wireframe mode, solid mode, shape mode, and everything else that you don't really need. I'm usually gonna just stay in the solid mode. You can also click on here for the shading. Um, choose textures, make the colors random. If you have multiple objects, go to matcap and uh, apply weird textures for whatever reason, if you're feeling fancy. Nothing we need right now. Just so you know it's there and you don't need it. Then right to that is your scene selection. That's all the objects we have. We have these, you can see here, for every new scene you create, there's like a camera. It's here, we have like a light source and a cube. We don't need any of those, so you can also just go here, right click, delete, right click, delete, right click, delete, so you have a completely empty scene. You can also make collections, it's basically a folder, so if you have like a mesh, like a plane and a sphere, you have those two, you can put those into a collection. Then you can hide the entire collection or make it so you can't select it anymore this or you can create any more objects like this weird giant cylinder and put this one right click into a new collection all right so you have those individually all pretty handy and pretty standard so far blender 2.79 didn't add any of this so consider yourself lucky you started when 2.8 was out already Awesome. Beneath there, at the bottom, there's like a lot of different options and we're gonna need two of them tops, which is usually here for the modifiers because that's where you can apply mirrors or subdivision surfaces, which I'm gonna cover in a minute. And more stuff like this entire scene. Uh, where is the scene, the scene, the scene? Here. It is. The scene. If you hover over it, it will show you what that means. So here's the scene where you can also set stuff like metric or imperial and set your units. For example, do centimeters, which is very useful for 3D printing. Great. At the bottom, there's the timeline, which we don't need. At the left, there are uh, things we can do depending on where we are. If we are in object mode, like we are right now, we can transform this, we can move it around by pressing move, you can rotate it, you can scale it. There's also shortcuts to that, which I would suggest you use. Um, which is, for example, if you want to move something, press the button G for do or move. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure why it's G, just press G to move it around. Click the mouse button, it stops at this position. If you press G, and then press one of the axes, because you can see here to the right, there's like, uh, if you go upwards, it's the Z axis. If you go front, it's the X and sideways is the Y axis. So if you press G and then one of those buttons, for example, Z, 
it will only move in this direction. Press X, it will only move in this direction. Press Y, it will only move in this direction. You can also do that by the mouse button. Press G, hold the middle mouse button in this direction, it will only move it here. Press the middle mouse button in this direction, it will only move here. Works the same for rotation. If you go to rotate, you press rotate, which is also R on the keyboard for rotate. Then you hold X, it will only rotate in this direction. You hold Y, uh, you press Y, only in this direction. Press Z, only in this direction. So you press G to move, R to rotate, and you scale it up by, you guessed right, pressing S for scale. Pressing S will scale, you press Z, and only scale in this direction, X only in this direction, and Y only in this direction. Okay, so now let's edit one of our objects. Uh, first, let me get rid of all these things here. You can either go here to delete the cylinders, right click, delete. You can also just select them and press X. X means delete, and whatever you have selected will be deleted. Now we can add something new. For example, you can either go here to add and to mesh, or you can press Shift A, which also brings up the same menu. And let's just for now uh, bring in a cube. And this cube here. Now, if you press the top button on your screen keyboard, it will, you can see, you can swap between the object mode and the edit mode. You can also do this by clicking with the mouse here. And what this does is, if you're in object mode, you can move the entire object. If you press tab and you are in the edit mode, you can either move the points, the edges, or the entire faces. Faces. So if you go here, click a point, select a point. You can also select multiple points, move them, uh, scale them, or rotate them. You can also select the edges, like here those or you can also select the entire phases and move those or rotate those. Easy peasy. One more thing, you can also select the edge for example, subdivide, so you have another point in the middle which is awesome. You can move this point too. If you want to move it only along the edge, you can move it, uh, press G another time and then it will only move along this side. Sometimes when you model something, you have a lot of points all around and you want to clean up your, your model. You have a lot of points that you don't need. You just move it uh, over another point. Press A to select everything. Click the right mouse button and go to remove double vertices. Vertices are basically the points. And then there's only one point again. Now I think it's actually time to build the headpiece. So let's just get rid of our cube again and bring in the reference image. And we do that by going to add, or here, go to add, image and reference image. But since I want this reference image to be only at the front and the side view, like the front and the right view, I'm gonna select the front view first. You can also go here to view, viewpoint and front. Then go to add image, reference image and select the reference image. Awesome, now we have it here. I can select it, press G, move it up here. I'm gonna move it along the Z axis because I'm gonna mirror it left and right later. So let's just try to find the middle, awesome, like this. Move to the right side, view, go to image, reference image, bring it again and move it up like around here. Awesome. I'm not sure if that lines up, but we're gonna do it in a minute. I'm first gonna select this one. Go to the right here to, uh, where is it? Here, this one, object data, because we want to change the object data for this image, which is, I want to make it transparent so I can see what I'm building beneath it or over it. So I'm gonna put the transparency to 50%, like 0.5. Make that it's only viewable in orthographic view, so only in the front view, pretty much. That means when I rotate the camera, it's gone, and it's only visible if I'm in the front view. Gonna do the same for the right image, 0.5, make it only viewable by front, awesome. So it's not in the way when I rotate the camera, but it's there when I need it. Okay, now to make them line up, I'm gonna add a cube. I'm gonna move that cube so the bottom line lines up. So I can put, I go to the right image, 
and make so that lines up as well. So I can see they are on the same height. And since it's the same image, I know they're the same, the same dimensions. Awesome, so they're all lined up. Amazing. Now, I use uh, select those two by shift. I can select two items, uh, two objects, this one and this one, put them into the collection and press this little arrow to the right, which says disable for, for a viewport selection, which basically means I can select it anymore and it doesn't get in my way when I build something. Okay, now I'm ready to start building this headpiece. So how am I going to do that? Well, there's multiple ways to do it. My favorite way is to work with planes. So I'm gonna add a mesh and a plane. Plane is basically just a flat 2D like plane. It doesn't have a height to it. It's just four points connected by four edges, which is one face. If you add any type of object, there's a little add menu that pops up at the bottom here, which says how big it is and I'm not gonna care about the units for now and I can also align it to the view, which is what I'm gonna do now because I want to see the plane. Awesome, as soon as I click somewhere else, that menu disappears and I have my plane. You can see it here, called plane. Now, I want to start building. So I scale this down just a little bit, move it up here and I want to mirror it from the right to the left. And I need a mirror axis for this, basically a point uh, over which my part is mirrored. And I do that by adding a empty arrow, single arrow. Like it doesn't have anything to it, it's not an object, it's just an, a single arrow. You can see it here, it's in the 0, 0, 0 point of my navigation system. And this empty I'm just gonna call mirror, like this. Make it unselectable, make it invisible. And now when I go to my plane I created, I can go to the little wrench here, which is the modifiers. Uh, one of the most important parts to the right menu here, the rest is not as important. Go to wrench, click on add modifier and go to mirror. Now I want to mirror this um, based on the mirror object, the mirror arrow I created. If I click this, you can see what happens. I'm just going to show the show the arrow again because it's mirrored based on where the arrow is. I can move it here and it's mirrored. Awesome. Now you can see if I move it like this it will go into each other and I don't really want that so I can click on clipping here which basically makes it that it melts together in the middle. So if I go to edit mode I move this Along the mirror plane, you can see there's only one point here and I can't move it past the past the mirror axis, which is what I want, because I want it to be exactly at the mirror plane and be like welded together in the middle. Now let's go back to the front view and start building this piece. First, I'm gonna move this one here, this one here, this one here, and this one here. Great, now the crux behind making any 3D object is changing between the front and the side views constantly. So that's what I'm going to do now. I select my points, go to the side view, move them only along the Y axis, so I'm pressing Y. Yeah, so I move it like here. And this point goes here, this point goes here. Oh, sorry, this goes here and this one goes here. Awesome. Great, that's the first step. Now let's extend this downwards. You extend something by selecting the points you want or the edges or the faces and pressing the button E for extension. Then you can see it creates two new points which I can move downwards. Press E again, move it sideways, press E again move it downwards, press E again, move it sideways, press E again, downwards, press E again, sideways. You get the idea. Awesome. Now I created all of these points here. Just gonna make my mirror invisible again. Yeah, looks great. From the side, well, not so much. So let's select these points and move them along the area again, uh, along the Y axis. 
So I move it here like this, move this one here like this, move this one here like this, move this one here like this. Also looks a lot more like the piece we want. Now let's continue this. I can also select a single point, hit E for extension, go here, press E again, go here. I can also select two points and create a bridge between them by going either to vertex, like points and vertices, points, and go new edge from face, face from vertices. Click this, and that basically connects a bridge between the two. Just gonna go back to show you, I can also do it by selecting both and pressing F, which is a lot faster. Awesome, now I'm gonna, yeah, select those two, drag them down here, move this one here, Move one down here, select these four, create a new face, move one here, select these four, create a face, move one here, select these four, create a face, move one here, these four, select the face, create a face, move one here, and yeah. <laughs> let's move this one up a little bit. Or down a little bit. This one here. Um, since this one goes in here. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna carry it for those later. But you see, since I'm only extending in one direction, it only stays on this plane here, which we can remedy by going to the side view and moving these points where we want them. Like this one here. Move this one here, move this one go, this one goes here. I'm basically only trying to look at the reference image and finding the points where I want those to be according to the reference image. So this one goes around here. Oops, sorry. This one goes around here. If you can see the parts behind, there's always the transparent button, which makes everything transparent. Don't forget that. This one I'm gonna move here, 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 this one I'm gonna move here. Oh, that's good. Um, one rule of thumb, uh, which you shouldn't forget, is always try to make your faces with four points. Try to avoid uh, having a face with five points. You can make one, but it will always lead to problems later. So I recommend always doing four point pieces. So for example, I'm gonna move this one up here, this one up here, just so I can create another four points here, because that's gonna be a lot easier to work with. So no three points, no five points, always try to go with four points, if you can. Now, we have like a little hole that is supposed to go in here. And how we do that? Easy peasy, we just can select the points around it, press E for extension, E for extension, E for extension, E for extension, and select the four to create a face, select these four to create a face, select these four to create a face. Now I'm gonna break my own rule, make one with only three points. See, never listen to me. Uh, one more with three points, uh, with four points, and one more in here. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. Not really, but I can select those. Go to the side view, only move them along, I'm gonna make these transparent, only move those along the Y axis. And you can see what this does is it creates a nice hole. That's exactly what I want. Awesome. Great, already getting a lot closer. Now, if it's sometimes hard to see what you're doing, you can always go here to the shading option. For example, turn on cavity, uh, which basically makes ridges and valleys more visible. You see, it creates more shadows, also uses more uh, computing power, so 
if you have a weak machine, uh, try not using it too much. Or you can also go to Madcap and selecting one of those options, for example, which makes it also easier to work with. Now I want to, since I'm getting, it's a little bit too rough for my taste and I need a little bit more detail, I want to cut all of these uh, uh, lines here directly in the middle. There's multiple ways to do that. I can either go here to the left to the knife tool, start cutting my way like a butcher all the way down, knock, 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 press enter, and I have a really ugly seam. It works, but it's not pretty, so I'm just gonna reverse that. And uh, the next shortcut you might want to remember or write down is pressing Ctrl R. If you press Ctrl and R, this little yellow line shows up, which gives you the option to cut things directly in the middle, which is what I'm gonna use here. So I press it once, then I can still move it if I want to, but I don't want to, so I press escape. And now I have a neat, oops, sorry, I have a neat little cut exactly in the middle, and the faces are all split in half, which allows me to create a lot more detail, which is what I'm gonna do here, because as you saw from the top view, this one here should probably be more like this. This one a little bit more down, like that, yeah, that looks way more like it. This one goes up here, this one goes up here. It's just fine tuning all the way. That's basically the entire hours of work that you're doing is just fine tuning, fine tuning, fine tuning. For hours on end. Awesome, slowly we're getting somewhere. Now, as you can still see, it's still a very flat piece. And if you look at the side view, there's actually a, a thickness to it. So how do we add thickness to this piece? You guessed right. We just select all the points from along the edges, like this, like this, like this, like this, select them, select them, select them, select them, select them, select them. All around, go to the side view, press E for extension and just drag it down like this. And already it has a really nice thickness to it. Now, if I continue to show you the building process in this amount of detail, this video will probably be, uh, let's say, six to seven hours long, <laughs> which I would like to avoid. I want to do something else today too. So um, I'm just going to record what I'm doing and just going to uh, um, jump in whenever there's something interesting to see and just talk over my recording pretty much. I hope that's okay. And yeah, let's do it. After I finished the part on top, I continued building the side piece the same way. Again, I started with a simple plane that I extended step by step to the left until it had the shape I wanted. And then I switched to the front view and made sure all the points here line up to this reference image as well. Next came the tooth at the front. This was done pretty similar. Based on the front image, I started with a long plane that I then separated into smaller sections. And these sections were then properly placed from the right viewport. After that, I just extended these shapes to the back and the first tooth was done. And as you can guess, the second tooth was done exactly the same way. The side piece here was just more of the same as well. At this point I tried to work with as little details as possible to find the right shapes. Luckily I have this 3D scan of Svetlana's head which was really helpful to make sure the headpiece would fit. Now I just mirrored the teeth and the side panels along my mirror axes and the rough base shape was finally done. Of course, I don't want to print the headpiece in this blocky looking state. Good thing there's a really easy way to increase the detail. Just select a piece, go right to the modifiers and choose subdivision surface. This modifier will automatically subdivide all of your shapes into even smaller pieces. See that? You can increase the detail even more by increasing the view count. I usually go with something like four or five. Now comes the magic part. If you press N to bring up the sidebar menu, 
you'll find the mean crease option. The closer you set this value to 1, the more the shapes will stick to your old blocky shape. And the closer it is to 0, the smoother it will be. Now let's change to the edge selection mode. To get a really nice shape, I keep the outer edges sharp, while at the same time only smoothing the inner edges. And this creates a really great finish. Some of the detail, however, I still had to add by hand, of course. For this, I basically split some faces in smaller pieces, deleted them, added new points and connected them again to different shapes. Now here is a handy tip. If you ever come across a piece that acts really weird, chances are that the front and the back sides are flipped. You see, every face has a front and a back side. If you go to the overlay menu at the top, you can turn on the face orientation and you will see immediately what I mean. Just make sure every piece always shows to the front, which is blue. To fix this, simply select the faces that are flipped, go to Mesh, Normals and Flip Normals. Now it's all good again and should work as intended. Now we're getting really close to the final shape. However, as you can see, I still need to cut out some details on the surface of some parts. This is a little bit tricky, but nothing we can't handle. I started by adding a few smaller cubes and rotating them to fit the position of the cutout. Then I mirrored it and added a subdivision just like before. Next I planed around with the mean crease until it had the shape I needed and here comes the trick. First I select the piece I want to carve my new shape out from. Then I add the modifier called boolean. And now I need to select the newer and smaller piece I made and set it to difference. I only need to hide the little one and there, it's carved out. Easy, right? Well, I only had to do this a couple of more times and the final headpiece was done, yeah! And with this, it was finally time to move on to 3D printing. To make sure all of your sizes are correct, I suggest checking the Scene tab in the Options menu to the right. Here you can set your unit system to either Metric or Imperial and tell Blender what units you want to use. I decided to go with Centimeter. Now this took a little bit of experimentation, but it worked fine for me. I set the unit scale to 0.01 and the grid scale to 0.001. I mean, this probably involves some math, which I'm honestly not very good at. However, now I selected my top hat piece and exported it to STL. In the export menu, I set it to selection only and set the scale to 10. Now when I open this STL in my 3D printing software, the headpiece has the correct size. Don't ask me why, it just does. To make it easier to print, I split the model in half and then placed it on the print bed. I pretty much just went with the standard settings and started the printing process. If you're interested, we have two Zortrex M200 printers. Printing all the headpiece parts in ABS took around 30 hours combined. After all the parts were printed, I used a little sanding machine to sand away the printing layers and then went over it again with a soft sanding sponge. To glue all the individual parts together, I used a self-made glue that's made with leftover ABS melted in acetone. I attached all the pieces and filled in the glue seam with some spot putty. Now I applied a layer of spray primer and sanded it smooth again, just to check if there were any more flaws. And finally to the painting. First I applied a silver spray paint and when this was dry a thin layer of hairspray. Now a few very light coats with white airbrush color on top. And when this was dry I could use a toothpick and some water to scratch the white away again and make it look old and used. And finally, just a layer of spray varnish and brown oil color that I wiped away again with a towel for some really nice weathering. Well, and with this, it was done. In the meantime, Svetlana made a headband that I could connect the headpiece to. I simply drilled a very small hole here and sewed it on. 
A couple of blue fabric stripes attached with hot glue and the headpiece was done, yay! Making the entire thing from reference image to finished print took me around 10 hours, not counting the printing time of course. That's a really short time to make a wife really happy. Well, and that's it! I really hope this video was interesting to anyone who's just starting with 3D modeling. I only started using Blender a couple of months ago, so I don't think it's that difficult to get to the point where I am now. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell or support our channel on Patreon. Thanks for watching, see you next time and bye bye.